Tear osmolarity is a really valuable component in the dry eye space. It's one of the first things that we see change with regards to it. And the higher the osmolarity, we know the more toxic the tears are to the eye and thus the cornea. You know, my advice to patients is it's so important to monitor not just your eyes on a yearly basis, but actually specifically the tear film, the quality of tears, because it's the number one, what we call refracting surface. That is where all your vision quality takes place. The tear film is actually this very complex lacrimal functional unit. It's made up of thousands of proteins and electrolytes and um, nutrients to help bathe, nourish, and keep our cornea and ocular surface healthy. Um, it is also the first thing that light hits when it goes into our eye. So it's the actual tear film that refracts or bends light. And so it controls our vision. Without that adequate, healthy, lacrimal functional unit, we'll have fluctuating vision, blurry vision, um, visual complaints of glare, um, in, in a conjunction with the discomfort, the pain, itching, burning, watering, that can also affect our patients' lives. When we're looking at vision, it's important to look at the quality of vision. If you have a hyperosmolar tear, then that patient's gonna have blurred, fluctuating vision. And so it's so important for us as a provider to stabilize that and address it for our patients to give them the optimal vision. When we have an increased osmolarity, we'll have an increase in light scatter. That'll result in a decrease in contrast sensitivity and the patient sees that as poorer vision. So the tear film being the first refractive surface that we encounter from the air, it's so valuable for us to have a super smooth tear film and in, in, in corneal surface. If that is affected, we can detect that with hyperosmolarity in, in our office. And if it is being affecting the patient, it's going to disrupt the visual clarity that they have. In some studies, it could be as bad as even having a grade one or a grade two cataract. And that clarity of vision is something that patients from a refractive standpoint are really looking for. If they're going to spend, you know, hundreds of dollars on a pair of glasses or they're desiring to have comfortable and clear vision with a contact lens, if the osmolarity is disrupted, it means the tear film and the corneal is disrupted and we're going to have a breakdown of the visual system. The first thing I think about when we bring in the Scout Pro is one is I think it's become the standard of care for not just dry eye patients, but all of the patients we're seeing. And that could be a wide range of cataract patients, surgical patients, LASIK, PRK, any of these refractive cases, or of course just simple patients, right? And that may be wearing glasses, contact lenses, or just general eye health there. So looking at osmolarity, I think the gold standard of this to see what is going on with osmolarity and homeostasis, and then of course improving outcomes in all the different ways we treat vision there. But we talk about the Scout Pro, then it really, really goes to efficiency there. So we have the model that's uh, being sunsetted now. We've had that for years. This gives us an opportunity to be way more efficient, test more patients, ultimately I think increasing our outcomes and patient satisfaction with everything we do. The reason I'm so excited to bring a Scout Pro into my practice is because I believe this is an essential tool to dry eye disease management. It's not a nice to have, it's not an extra value. It's truly essential. And I can tell you that because so many of the patients that get referred into my clinic have symptoms that sound like dry eye, but they don't have dry eye. And they may have other tests that mimic dry eye, but their tear quality is really the key factor. And it's only the Scout Pro that can give me the opportunity to truly measure the quality of tears they have. Osmolarity numbers really matter because it's an objective test that I can perform and I walk into the room knowing that before I ever even see the patient. So we've always had sometimes this discorrelation between signs and symptoms and dry disease, ocular surface disease is very subjective and having that objective number, knowing where the patient is, are they normal, do they have hyperosmolarity, is my therapeutic treatment that I've started with the patient effectively working, do we need to add more to the patient? That objective number really guides my clinical decision making. The reason why we're bringing Scout Pro into the practice is for clinic efficiency. 
We have a handheld portable tool. It's precise. It's going to give us information. Our techs are very excited about it when they first started, and so we are very excited to bring it into our practice. I'd recommend colleagues think about incorporating Scout Pro into their practice because it's one of the key biomarkers in dry disease. I think sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. Um, we don't see what we don't look for. Um, and testing for osmolarity has really opened my eyes to the deeper understanding that's going on in ocular surface disease and what's going on in these patients' tear film. We're really looking forward to what's the most innovative and the best treatments and technologies that we can incorporate. We've always done that. So when it came to a diagnostic device going to its next level, we wanted to be first of class in our practice. And so looking for that usability of how we were going to be able to use it and help our patients, how we're gonna be able to make efficiency better for our practice, and how we're gonna make our staff's life a little bit better. Those were all reasons why we needed to move forward right away. The impact on patient flow and on staff is tremendous because the, the staff had been accustomed to having to run back and forth to the rooms and then to the docking unit. It literally created collisions in the hallway. This has streamlined, the staff goes in, they take the measurements, they're out. It just expedites, I get to see the patients faster. Yeah, the Scout Pro is great based on efficiency. Osmolarity is probably the number one diagnostic test I would buy if I was starting a dry clinic all over again. We're starting to recognize that one of the reasons patients don't get good quality vision after cataract surgery, especially if they're having a premium IOL or multifocal, is because the tear film is affecting it. But we have to take it beyond that. I think it's also the primary reason why contact lens wear isn't successful, especially with presbyopic contact lenses or even any. And I also believe it's the number one reason for remakes in glasses, which is very expensive on a practice in terms of time, commitment, reputation, having to redo glasses multiple times. In our practice, we use, utilize Scout Pro to test for osmolarity when we're uh, screening patients for concomitant dry eye disease in our surgical consultations, our refractive surgery procedures, um, just so we can better prepare our patients for the surgical experience that we're trying to deliver. I like the objective testing and that combined with my slit lamp exam gives me a complete picture of what is going on with my patient so that I can best therapeutically treat them. So we see hyperosmolarity and osmolary testing go from the dry, esoteric world to more of the mainstream clinic these days, right? And why is that? Well, it's in pursuit of the happy patient, good outcomes. We used to think of that as 2020, but we know we have that smaller subset sometimes that is 2020, but they're unhappy. 20 unhappy, right? Why is that? We know the literature now points to things like light scatter. Um, so when you have a cornea that looks normal, there may, need a, may be no staining, tear breakup time looks good. Just something going on there, right? We have good IOLs these days. We don't have to worry about centration. When there's things going on with hyperosmolarity, we can catch that and identify things like light scatter that really help to pinpoint why some of these patients are unhappy, even though they're 2020.